In this video, we are going to take a look at the most modern variants of Iranian tanks, like Zulfikar III or most famous Karar tank. Before we go any further, a quick word from my sponsor, War Thunder, which is also a game I quite like playing myself. War Thunder is a military vehicle combat online game. It is free to play on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Not to mention that it is cross-platform between PC and consoles. The game features an incredible arsenal of more than 1500 historically accurate playable tanks, aircraft, helicopters and ships from 1930s to 1990s. Best thing about the game are its realistic physics and one of the most detailed and most immersive vehicle damage models in gaming. If you use my link to register, you will receive a bonus, a premium vehicle, tank, aircraft or ship, as well as 3-day account boost. The game is completely free, so you can start playing immediately. Zulfikar III was first revealed at the 2013 parade. Sadly, there isn't much information about this tank available, so there is not much to work with here. According to available information, the fire control system of the tank is CUT-72, which is a copy of Slovenian EFCS-3 Fotona fire control system, which has no thermal imager, but only simple second-generation infrared sight for night operations, which is an obsolete type of fire control system for the modern standards. CUT-72 was featured on previous Iranian tanks like Type 72Z and Zulfikar 1, and it seems that they simply reused it for the newest Zulfikar tank, since at the time they had no better technology to work with. If we take a look at the images available, it looks like the commander lacks an independent panoramic sight, which means that the tank obviously lacks thermal or infrared for the commander. The inside components are also unknown, and I couldn't find any information whether the commander has a display panel or not. The armor composition is completely unknown, so is the weight. Some sources state that it is around 40 tons, and others state 52 tons, which makes it a big problem for even trying to guess the level of protection of the tank. There are some speculations that Iran used Iraqi M1A1M tanks to get an idea for the composite armor for Zulfikar III, and if that is the case, the armor is not that good since those Abrams tanks are simple M1A1 tanks without heavy armor upgrade, meaning that they lack depleted uranium armor or anything in its stead, which makes the turret armor completely obsolete for modern standards, but ultimately it could be good enough for Iran. But again, there is no official information. Those are simple speculations based on nothing but simple guessing. However, that speculation is the only thing we can work with. The upper front plate appears to have some additional protection in some form of composite armor or perhaps some form of ERA. Another thing to note is that it looks like the tank lacks blowout panels, but the pictures from above that are available seems to be some trial variants and they lack other things like the gunner sight and the commander's cupola looks completely different. I don't know if those are some pre-production variants or they were simply rushed for the parade, but they do not look like official production variants, so I can't really tell if the protection variant has blowout panels or not, since there isn't a clear look on the roof of the tank. It could be that it is simply an extension for storing ammunition, like in older Cold War tanks such as M60, which could make sense because original Zulfikar was based on Iranian M60 tank. But the tank, according to available information, has a carousel autoloader like Soviet tanks. The tank is armed with a 125mm 2A46M gun. The best projectile Iran is currently producing is 3BM42 Mango, which is kinda old projectile and is certainly not good enough against most modern tanks but can be good enough against older tanks, which is what most Iranian neighbors have, and if Iran ever goes to war with some of them, the projectile would be good enough. Aside from APF-SDS, it can obviously fire heat and higher explosive fragmentation. Now, there are some sources that state it can fire 80 gems, but it's highly unlikely, since it uses Slovenian fire control system, which does not have an 80 gem channel, and we know that because very similar fire control system is already used on Slovenian and Croatian M84A4 tanks, and if we look closely, we can see that main gun sight is practically identical. Maneuverability-wise, the tank is not that bad. 
The engine is apparently AVDS 1790 with 1000 horsepower and maximum torque of 3400 newton meters, which gives the tank maximum speed of 70 km per hour and depending on its actual weight, which we sadly do not know, the tank can perform quite differently depending which weight value is true. Now we move on to the infamous Carrar tank. The tank has been subjected to some controversy, main one being that it is just a mock-up of a T-72S tank. We could see some images of Iranian T-72S tanks having what appears to be Karar's ERA mounts, thus the idea arose that Karar is nothing more but a mock-up tank, made for propaganda. But later on, a lot of images popped out of actual welded turret being made and mounted on Karar tanks. Most likely case is that it was a T-72S tank in process of being converted to Karar, where the turret is not yet removed. The welded turret of Karar basically takes an entire idea from Russian T-90A tank, since we could even see the images of composite and it appears to be made out of reflecting plates, just like a T-90A's welded turret. However, there is a problem with ERA which appears to be nothing more but an old Iranian ERA that was previously mounted on M60 and T-72 tanks, and looks something like enlarged Contact 1. It is very unlikely that ERA offers any kind of protection against APF SDS projectiles, judging by the fact that it was mounted on M60 tanks on sides and roof of the turret, which has nothing to do with kinetic energy protection. It could be that it offers some protection against tandem-shaped projectiles, but even that is debatable. On the other side, the turret is not that bad in terms of protection, and it most likely can stop all Cold War era projectiles, which is what most of Iranian neighbors use today, including Iran. The problem is that they lack newer guns that are required to sustain the pressure of better projectiles. It has also received the capability of firing Invar ATGMs, which are tandem-shaped and can be effectively used against older tanks. The commander's remote weapon station has a site that seems to be controllable independently from the MG, thus serving as a commander's independent thermal viewer, but the generation of the thermal is unknown. It also appears that the commander has a control panel, which is a great addition for the tank. The main gun site has second generation thermal, which is a copy of the Chinese one used on ZTZ 96B tank. The driver received a digitalized panel, which he can also use for the navigation. He also received front and rear camera, making his life a lot easier. Now, I couldn't find any information on the engine. Some sources indicated it retains all V84 engine from T72S. Some say that the engine was slightly upgraded and some say it has completely new engine. There just isn't any reliable source that indicates which engine it has since most of them don't say anything at all. I mean, overall, Karar is a good tank. However, in recent years they have been very silent about it and we couldn't see any new ones at all. All media that exists of it is from the period of its reveal. That can suggest that the production has stopped or that it is extremely slow. It is very likely that the tank is too expensive for Iran to mass produce or to produce it at all. Recently, Iran has revealed their new upgrade for their T-72S tanks, which they named T-72M. The information about the tank is pretty scarce right now, so the best option is to look at the tank externally to get a better perspective on the upgrade. The main gun sight is definitely the same as on regular T-72S tank, which means that the tank lacks a thermal sight for the gunner, and only has passive image intensifiers, which is pretty bad for modern standards. Unlike T-72S, this tank appears to have a remote weapon station, which also appears to have a thermal sight, which may double as a panoramic sight. The tank has also received meteorological sensor and new explosive reactive armor, or new types of ERA compared to other Iranian tanks, since it appears visually that the hull is equipped with FI2 ERA, which offers some kind of additional kinetic energy protection. However, it is pretty old and the tank most likely can't survive hits from modern APF SDS projectiles at the hull. The turret is equipped with some different kind of ERA. It is larger than Contact 5 or FI2, but what is strange about it is that it is not mounted on 68 degrees like Russian ERA blocks. It looks like nothing like any ERA that is mounted on either Russian or Chinese tanks, so this can be some brand new Iranian ERA meaning that sadly we have no information about its performance whatsoever. 
It seems that the driver didn't receive any front camera, as for the rear camera we can't know since there are no pictures of the tank from the rear. We also have no information about the engine or transmission, so we have no idea about the mobility. There is possibility that it retained everything from T-72S tanks, but we can't claim anything without valid information. There is also no information about the production of the tank. It could be that this is the answer to expensive Karar tank and they went with some cheaper upgrade for their T-72S tanks, but that is only an assumption since there is absolutely no information about it. Don't forget to check out War Thunder, where you can take control of many land, air or naval vehicles. Use the link from the description to get a premium vehicle and a 3-day account boost when you register. Remember, the game is completely free for PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Just download and play. At the end, all of those tanks are good enough for Iran's current operations. But if push comes to shove, like it almost did, those tanks wouldn't really stand a chance against anything remotely modern. Karar might go to toe with some better tanks, but as I said before, there is absolutely no information in its production. It's like the tank simply vanished. They maybe just wanted to show off what they could achieve, but then probably realized that they wouldn't be able to afford to massively produce those tanks. That would be all. Thanks for watching. If you like my content, you can consider supporting me on Patreon. And if you can't, leave a like on the video or subscribe if you are new. And I'll see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.